Hey there everyone, it's Michael Dougal. I sell residential real estate here in the greater Toronto area. And during this video, I'm going to answer this commonly asked question of why are condo prices so low in Toronto? And it is true because in this chart here, we can see that our average price is lower than what it was one year ago. The orange line represents 2021, whereas the blue line represents 2020. And the average price was um, a few thousand dollars more last year. But if we take a look at the detached market, there is uh, quite a significant gap between both lines, which demonstrates that the prices are clearly higher. Uh, just over this past week, the average price detached home in Toronto is selling for uh, $160,000 more than what it was selling last year. So that's what we're gonna talk about during this video. Consider subscribing if you get value from this video. And if you're looking for information with like the detached market and semis and all the different property styles, then I would recommend you watch this video right here and let's jump right into it. So the very first chart that I want to show you shows the weekly activity taking us all the way back to December 2020 where the average price was at $608,000. Now it's at $730,000. The good news is prices have appreciated for all of you condo homeowners. However, you can't ignore the fact that freehold properties, their prices are skyrocketing, whereas the condo market, some days it's up, some days it's down. Based on this chart here, we can see that there was a good appreciation of the condo market in uh, January and then all the way up to end of March, you can say. At the end of February, the prices reached $738,000. So when the prices increased from December, up to the end of February. This followed the same pattern as the rest of the market for detached homes and semi-detached homes. Pretty much everything was up and it could be said that it's because that's when the uh, lockdown restrictions were lifted and people's lives and job situations kind of began to be a bit more normalized. But then what we saw was then in March and April, the new lockdown came into an effect and then that kind of suppressed the price growth, you can say. And so something that a lot of people don't take into consideration, what really separates the condo market from the rest of the market are the types of buyers out there. Firstly, we have a huge portion of buyers which are foreign investors and foreign investors don't feel as comfortable buying in Toronto right now based on how comfortable they felt you can say 2015 up to 2019 because that's when condos were really skyrocketing and it was you can say driven by a lot of interest from investors. Investors were purchasing properties and renting them out to hold on to them long term. But now in the grand scheme of things, it's just not a good idea. The market is very volatile. And at the same time, what makes things worse is that the rental market has actually declined quite significantly than what it was pre-pandemic. So if people buy these properties, they're accepting that they are not going to cash flow if they have tenants, meaning when they have a tenant there and the tenant is paying their monthly rent, that payment is not covering the owner's mortgage payments and their general expenses like property taxes and maintenance fees. So that's the first factor. It's that investors aren't comfortable buying just yet. But the second factor is that seniors also aren't comfortable buying yet. A lot of the condos were purchased from seniors that were downsizing from homes which they lived in. But I can't tell you how often I hear from seniors that we're not comfortable selling our house yet and buying a condo. We want to wait until the lockdown ends, until the pandemic ends, because then we'll have more comfort going into a condo in the first place and even looking for property and getting themselves out there. So now that the lockdown rules have lifted and it seems like it's going to stay that way as long as everybody gets vaccinated and we keep the number of cases low then what's going to happen is a lot of these seniors are going to sell their homes and then purchase condominiums so i am expecting prices to go up but it will take a bit of time i would say within three to four months that's when we should see prices go up by at least five percent so those are my predictions there are so many first-time buyers that cannot afford to buy houses right now so it's just a matter of time until the prices do increase i would recommend buying sooner rather than later I'm taking a look at this next chart over here, which shows the months of inventory. And what this number is, is a reflection of the strength of the market. The lower the months of inventory, the better it is for sellers. Whereas the higher the months of inventory, the better it is for purchasers, meaning there's more inventory for buyers to go ahead and choose from. And the number has been increasing. As we can see back in the end of March, it was only around 0.5. Uh, now it's around 1.8. We can see in the few months prior, it's been pretty much like 1 to 1.2 to 1.4. These are still very good numbers. If we have a month of inventory that's under two, it means that when listings are coming on the market, these sales are going to accelerate at a good pace to keep the number of listings fairly low. Based on the average price, we can see it went higher, it went lower. Uh, the months of inventory kind of followed the same pattern we saw with detached houses, but 
We're finding that in some areas, it can be very difficult to sell your condo because if you're in a high rise, which has a lot of units up for sale, then naturally there isn't enough supply to offset the demand. And that's what's going to keep properties from selling. But if you're in a building with very few listings up, likely you should be selling your home in under a week and over the asking price. In this chart here, the purple bar shows the number of sales each week. So we can see that it trended upwards in the month of March. That was at its highest point. End of March, you can see it was around 535, whereas now only 296. But I'm really expecting this number to go up. These are the number of units that have sold. Old. So you have to keep in mind, uh, this doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad market. It could just be such that there weren't a lot of new listings that were put up for people to go ahead and purchase. So now what I'm expecting is sellers should feel a lot more comfortable showing their home to the public, showing their home to buyers. They'll put their listings up. And at the same time, consumers like investors and like the seniors will be back in the market looking to buy. And the number of sales is going to really go up. And on top of that, the rental market should be going up. We're already seeing a transition right now in that the average like one bedroom, the rent is up. The average two bedroom, the rent is also up. So once this does increase back to what it was pre-pandemic times, uh, the prices will go up. They really have every reason to go up. So again, if you're considering buying a condo, I would definitely choose to buy sooner rather than later. And if you need help with that, then of course, contact me. I'm looking for buyers and sellers and people to help. My contact information is in the description box below. As well, don't forget to consider subscribing if you've got value from this video. And I'm looking for ambitious real estate agents. If you'd like to connect and partner with me, then contact me as well. Well, my contact information is in the description box below. And if you have thoughts about changing brokerages, then be sure to watch this video over here where I discuss my experience so far being with this wonderful brokerage EXP Realty after moving from Remax one year ago. And I'll look forward to seeing you all next time.